Bill. Hello and welcome to it. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> Hi. Today we're going to do a little primer episode on uh, brakes. One of the most important things in any car. Uh, this is Jamie's Doom Buggy, Persephone. And uh, typical VW problem. Anybody that's owned a VW, the brakes are always kind of weird. And Jamie's experiencing this for her first time. <laughs> when they work, they work. And then for some reason, after a few days, they go away. Nothing. Pedal presses. We're seeing some action. You hear a little noise, but the car doesn't stop. Pedal to the floor. All the parts are basically new. We're trying to discover if it's a manufacturer defect in one of the cylinders, maybe the master or the wheel cylinder. We're not seeing any fluid release. And you experience it. What happens when you're driving on the trail? I have no brakes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have to downshift, and it's a little scary. <laughs> yeah. So literally, it just goes Thank away God. at random. Thank God I know how to downshift. Yeah. But, uh, I, I like to have brakes. Right. So uh, Jamie doesn't really know what goes on underneath the car. So we're going to discuss the parts, what they do, try to figure out what's gone wrong. So you sit here, right? Oh, I thought the, you wanted me to get in no. right now. I was like, wait, When what? we bleed the brakes, we're going to do that. But, okay. you know, you're sitting here and you're pressing the brake pedal, right? Uh -huh. So what happens under the car? That's what we're going to discuss. I like that. I raise the car way up so we can see clearly. And uh, if you look in at this angle, uh, your brake pedal is in the car in here, and it pushes a rod. And I told you the joke about the master and the slave, right? So mm -hmm. that's the master cylinder right here. It's rusty because it sits out in the weather, but it's two years old. It was a brand new unit, and it has very little hours compared to a street-driven car. So if there's no fluid loss. This reservoir is full. So when you put your brake fluid in, it sits in that little jar. And when you press the pedal, it pushes the fluid through a series of tubes and hoses to the wheel cylinder or slave cylinder. So I'm going to press the brake pedal and watch... Watch what that does. Okay. We have a little bit of action. You'll see right here. When I press the brake pedal, mm -hmm. see, it pushes. It's supposed to push both of those out, oh. which pushes this brake shoe onto the uh, wheel, uh, not the rotor, but the uh, drone. So it's doing it a little bit. That's what we're, uh, we can't figure out why, why the brakes don't work. So if I hold this one and the bottom one should go, is it? A little bit. All right. Maybe it's just rust. But it's not because, see, this is the face. Oh, okay. So those things push out and go, they make it stop. It pushes on it and makes it stop. So this brake was obviously doing something. That's why it's moving. It's pretty clean. Mm -hmm. So I invite you and look, see these. See how it's thicker on this side mm -hmm. than on this side? Mm -hmm. So that's of a little bit of concern. It should be basically even. These are pretty thin. Let's look at the other side. So when you step on the brakes, all four wheels do that. They expand and push on the brake drums. So looking at this side, our very loyal cameraman, Erie Eric. Thank you for taking over the camera today, Eric. Also an auto tech, he said, look at this one. It's not nearly as shiny as the other one. It's dusty. Huh. Like it hasn't been doing its job. And these pads are pretty thin also. So I'm going to press that pedal and you tell me if that thing moves. Okay. You are wrong, right? Yeah. Sometimes I forget, and I'm like, oh, crap. I, I'm oh, doing my job. <laughs> I was promised a bag of Skittles, and I am planning on eating Skittles. <laughs> um, the top one is. We do have a motor now. Well, he's pushing the brakes. If you want to push down on the upper shoe and see if it's continuing to lower. No. A little bit. A little bit. Like when I press, put pressure on it. Yeah. A little bit on the bottom, but not really. And you're not seeing anything leaking, huh? Mm-mm. All right. So those aren't seized up. That's what we're trying to see. Sometimes these things will get water in them and 
rust shut. They're both free. As long as they're moving, they're moving. This has the potential for, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of pounds of PSI when you hit the brakes hard. So that little bit of stuckness isn't going to affect the brakes actually working because we had nothing. So these two are moving, right? Let's check out the back. So when you press the brakes, all, all four tires break? Correct. And that's different than in like a regular car, right? It's well, just... a modern car will have a lot of different things. Anti-lock. Eric. May I? Yes. <laughs> You're just going to hear me, kids. You're not going to see me. Trust me, it's better that way. I'll okay. do the mouth motion and you do the narration. All right, got it. There we go. All right, so listen. The front brakes are rated and you have what's called a metering block in there. So the rear brakes are going to drag. The front brakes are going to, you know, stop you harder. Sorry, I'm not trying to jiggle. <laughs> He's making me jiggle. Moving on. So the front brakes predominantly stop harder than the back. Uh-huh. Okay. So there's usually a meter block to do that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Volkswagens don't have metering blocks. They don't? Nope. Like that little thing under the hood yeah. in the Chevy. So Volkswagens, it's very basic. It's almost like a motorcycle in that there may be a different size port in the master cylinder, mm -hmm. but uh, there is nothing else. You'll see here. We'll look at this once again. You can't hand talk and hold the phone at the same time. I, I can't get Eric's a hand, hand talker. Guys, so. Don't ask me for directions if, I'm, if I have a knife in my hand. Someone will die. So <laughs> look how simple this is. It's almost go-kart style. Yes. Front and rear hoses come off. It's a single piston master cylinder. Right? So and that's what I'm saying. It's like, what what is going wrong? Is is that little seal in the master cylinder bad? Is it bypassing somehow and pushing back up into the reservoir? Chances are. The back wheels, I have them tight enough so that I can't even get this. See, I got to loosen them to get this off because there's a little ridge on that. So Volkswagens of this age are a little tough because you have to access the uh, screws that adjust the brakes through this little hole. So I, I'm seeing some wheel grease in here. It's what juicy. Uh, seal from the transaxle is bad. It's juicy. So I'm gonna back off. So you put the screwdriver in just like so many American cars. And you turn the little star and adjust it. So let me get this guy going. That's going to... Uh, yeah, it's going to loosen it. Yeah, we got some juice in there, but I don't think that would cause the brake pressure to be affected. It just wouldn't stop. Yeah, it would we slide on grease. Yeah, we just kind of grease the pads and or the shoes and that would be kind of that. What we're experiencing is no paddle. No paddle. Ooh, I just tightened it. Oops, it goes the other way. That's there we go. So this is frustrating with this car specifically because I have these cool chrome hubcaps that cover all this stuff. So you can only adjust the brakes with the tires off, which is a little bit odd, but we get through it. So yeah, I back those off. No, not it's juicy, but you have your natural arrangement of flora and fauna. <laughs> I was expecting a mouse to pop out of it. So we got some juice, but it's not, usually you'll see, you'll see just wetness. Yeah, this will be soaked. So you see some dust, but that's not the worst that I've ever seen. But look at the wheel cylinder again. Two and a half, year, three years old. Let's see if they work. And here in the desert, we don't get, we don't go through puddles or mud, so you don't get that rust you'll see in the East Coast cars. Ready? Mm -hmm. Not really anything. So I'm going to lock these two fronts shut. I'm going to put these drums on and keep those from moving. We'll see if we get any motion. How are we doing? Oh, way more. A lot? Way more, yeah. Weird, right? So let's put this drum on, check the other one. So would you have to have, like in a cart, a 
like this for what we're doing? Do you have to have brakes on all four wheels? It helps. You could you could potentially only run rear brakes like they do on sand buggies, but if you slam to a halt, the f the weight of the car goes towards the nose. So it just it unweights the back and you just skid. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah, if you put brakes on only the front, you get the exact opposite where it's it's on right now and you're steering and getting out of control and the back is just all over the place. Oh, okay. So four is best. Choppers will use only a rear brake. It's a lot of fun coming to a stoplight <laughs> with only one wheel, unweighted, and a long raked front end. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's my laugh for everyone that hates my laugh. <laughs> yeah. You get comments on how much they don't like Jamie's. <laughs> That's my guy laugh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> You sound just like some of my buddies. I digress. Okay, whatever. It's my Santa Claus laugh. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'll put the light underneath my uh, my face. Yes. A ghoulish laugh. <laughs> Get out of here. Maniacal. Maniacal. Maniacal laugh. Eric said maniacal laugh. It's not a ghoulish laugh. It's a maniacal laugh. <laughs> and yeah, this one smells a little like grease too, but I don't see any drips. Is that what I'm smelling? That oh, you gotta. If anybody knows the smell of ninety weight high point gear oil. <laughs> oh wow, I can smell it all the way up here. Yeah. When one of these axles gets bad and the stuff is burnt up, you got a real good stench. Let's see what this one does. So when the axle seals leak, you start to get drips through here. See, so that's... Oh, so that's... Yeah, mm, I can smell that. Good stuff. So let's see what happens now. <laughs> Ready? Ready. The one on the front is moving. The one in the back is not moving at all. All right. So... As long as we have some movement, so this one was moving? Yes. You press the brake, por favor. You can reach in with your arm. There's no pressure, so just try to move it. Which one's the brake again? Uh, okay. The one that makes you stop. Ugh. I might not be tall enough. Want a stick? Yeah, because I, I don't quite have it. the, and my boobs are in the way. <laughs> I don't have that problem. <laughs> this is strategically film you doing that without, like, you know. Oh, I don't care. No. I don't care. <laughs> no, it works. Is it perfect? Want me to do it again? Sure. So, great. All the springs are in place. Sometimes you'll get some of these pieces that may come apart, especially on a buggy that bounces around a lot, but the springs are in perfect shape. They're installed. The pads look decent. The wheel cylinders, like I mentioned, these aren't rusty. They're basically fresh. So I don't know, I guess we can try to bleed the brakes. So what happens uh, when you bleed the brakes is uh, when you install it, uh, there's air in the lines. You're mm -hmm. looking for a pure fluid, a hydraulic thing, so there's no air. Air compresses. Hydraulic yeah, fluid does it. Once. The brakes yeah. on something a time yeah. before. So a reason I brought the car up in the air like this, with the VWs, the master cylinder is down low. It's right on the floor. Mm -hmm. In so many American cars, the master cylinder is up on the dashboard height. I don't know if that affects the bleeding, but what I did was master cylinder's up now. And you always start with the wheel furthest. Oh, and so the gravity. Potentially. So I'm just going to open. There's a little nipple here. And then you open that, and it should start to drool out brake fluid. I'm going to open that and see what happens. Do I need to do anything? You're going to press the brakes after we check. Oh, okay. We're just going to see. Because sometimes you can just hold the pedal to the floor, <laughs> and it'll just drain out. You let it drain for a bit. And then uh, close it. So do brakes do this often? They shouldn't. <laughs> that's the that's, mystery. That's the frustration. Yeah. I had a couple motorcycles. Uh, everybody will understand. Also, some could be sitting in the barn for 20 years. And 
they work. Mm -hmm. And why in five days, when barely driving, does this one keep losing yeah, the charge? Yeah, because when the brakes were first done, they were fantastic. Yeah. Because they're all new. Why wouldn't they be fantastic? So I'm going to turn this little brake valve nipple thinger and open it. See if we get any juice. Tell me when. I'm just going to see if gravity does anything. Oh, okay. Already. Yeah. So we got nothing. Just hold it all the way to the floor. And let's see if something happens. We got juice. Do not let go. So that was a that was straight up no air, no bubbles, a good shot of brake fluid. So I feel confident enough in that. Let's try the other side. Can I let go? Now you can, yes. So what just happened is uh, brake fluid came out of here, and when she released the pedal, it drew the missing fluid in the system from that reservoir. So it's important to watch that as we go. That's full to the top, so I'm not worried about. So now you've basically troubleshooted that, that it wasn't a brake fluid issue. If you open that and a bunch of air bubbles come out, it's like, mm -hmm. ooh, there's air in it. There still could be air somewhere in here, but we're just seeing if there's a problem at this okay. wheel cylinder. That makes sense. Yeah. So again, uh, furthest wheel to closest wheel. So we're going to go from this one to that one to that one to that one. It's like surgery. It is surgery without the blood and gore. And if you know old cars, this almost is never this easy. <laughs> so you know that these parts are pretty new. Because sometimes this stuff is rusted, stuck, and shit. All right, so let's open this and see what comes out. So we got no juice. Now just push that to the floor in the same manner. Pushing. Is it down? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Ah. Do not let go. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait. I just twisted and air came out. It totally, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. Release. This push. Is fun. Oh, push it again. Oh, now we're going to push all the air out of the system. Ooh, that's harder. Excellent. Ready? I'm pressing down. Feel it go down? No, not yet. Good. More air just came out. Here's our problem. How did air get in the system? I wonder. Release. Release the brake? Yep. Okay. Press it again. Ready? Yep, it's down. Oh, look at that. The bubbling and spitting. All right, let it go. Press it. Ready? It's down. So we have, okay, let it go again. We have really, really low pressure back here. Oh, wow. Air came out, and I would be able to feel like a strong, like on the other side, it, it squirted out. Mm -hmm. This just kind of drooled. Sometimes what will happen with VWs is the rubber hoses will age and collapse. So try it once more. Okay. Pressing. All right. Okay, we just got a good. Yeah, solid I felt juice. it on the uh, on the pedal. All right, let it up. Look at this. Can you see that, Eric? Oh my god! <laughs> it's fine. So we got the hardware for the spring plate is oversized, and it's been chowing into that shock absorber. So good work, Jamie. You've been putting it through the bumps. <laughs> As Doing this thing compresses, it. these studs are just <laughs> mashing that poor shock that's absorber. Why, that's why I was worried that it didn't have brakes because I like to, you know, really. Kind of rip up a little bit. With oh, I you, could tell. You get like the party, don't you? You're, you're yeah, using you're using all the suspension. That's a good sign. Well, you all said right. it had good suspension in it. Press it once more, por okay. favor. Oh, oh, damn! That like went hard. That was the problem. But where did the air get in there? Because it like before I had a ton of resistance, and now it was like. Okay, let go. Wow. Press again. Now it's hard again. You got pedal. And yeah. plenty of juice. Okay, let it go. So th there was air in here for some reason. Now, air does not grow in brake lines. <laughs> so do you feel like if you're sitting in there, you got brakes like you should? 
Yeah. Definitely. Odd. Can I let go? Yes. Yeah, because before, like, I was having to, like, really jam it down to the floor to even get a little bit of break. And now there's, like, so much more resistance. Yes. Because one thing we really like to oh, do. Oh, did you feel that? I, well, I heard it. There's something broken in the master cylinder. I pressed it and there was pressure. And do you feel, do you see me do yeah, that? Yeah, that's what happened when I was pressing the stick on it. It's a bad master cylinder. Am I allowed to talk? Are you going to be my, my maid here? I want you to check this out, Eric. Here, I'm going to put this. We're rolling. So, yeah, I want you to check out that brake pedal. I just had pressure, and when I pushed on it, boom, it fell to the floor. Yeah, there's nothing there. There's very little at the front. Very little. Okay, so what's happening? Master cylinders are a plunger. There's a two-part rubber seal in there. It's just a shaft. When you push in, you're giving it pressure. When it pulls back out, it's being allowed to suck in air. That's why you're getting air in your wheel cylinders. It's just happens over time. Could have been dust, dirt. It could have been bad part. I have oh. a feeling this was the cheapest master cylinder I could find. It was literally $9 on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> How long did it last? Two years. <laughs> Go get an $18 one. I'll see you in four. And we, <laughs> and we bash this thing around with emergency stops all the time. Yeah. You're hauling butt. You're seeing an obstacle, and you're slamming the brakes maximum. Uh, it's yeah. the way this car is driven. I think you need a good old uh, German-engineered... We're going to buy, version. or even the Brazilian, they're good. Yeah. So I'm going to hand the camera back to you. Oh, yeah. Continue. So interesting. We didn't know what we're up against because we did this, this car for about a year. Hey, Jamie's like, hey, let's go out riding. The brakes are out again. So I come out. I do a quick one guy bleed, right? Squirt the, squirt the fluid out. Everything's fine. I do it with a stick like that. Uh, we go out riding, next day, boom, nothing. <laughs> and it's happened again, and I'm cranking on the stars on the brake drums, trying to get the pads. Remember when we were pushing it, it was very hard to push. We're going to take that master cylinder out on the next episode of Fun in the Desert. <laughs> what a relief. Awesome, yeah, yay. I'm glad that we know now. So I'm going to order that, and we'll get back on this. But, uh, yeah, I guess buy the good parts.